Hello guys, this is Code and Code and this is second lecture of Graph Theory Part 1 series. So in this lecture, we are going to talk about the first search. As I have already mentioned, there are two different traversal techniques, uh, depth first search and breadth first search. So in this lecture, we are going to talk about depth first search. So let's start this lecture. So uh, as there are two different traversal techniques, it is important to know the difference between them. Uh, so first thing that you, know, you need to know is the level. Each node can be assigned a level once you have assigned a root uh, suppose node 1 is a root for us so node 1 would be set to be on level 0 and now all the nodes which can be reached which are at distance 1 from root node are set to be on level 1 for example node 2 node 2 is the only node which is at level 1 and the distance we measure by number of edges since uh, to reach from uh, root node to node 2 we need to traverse only one edge that is why the distance between root and node 2 is 1 that is why it is at level 1 now 3 and 4 lie on level 2 because you need to traverse two edges to reach node 3 or node 4 from root node so that is why they lie on level 2 and 5 and 6 lie on level uh, 3. So in BFS what, what would happen if you start from root node it would, it would traverse all the level 0 nodes and then all the level 1 node then all the level 2 node and then all the level 3 nodes. So in BFS can also be, uh, can also be said as uh, level level order traversal technique while in bfs it is not the case uh, in bf uh, in dfs what would happen it would start from root node of course and choose any one of the node which are not visited yet and are directly connected to current node so uh, from root root node there is only one node which is connected and is not traversed yet that is 2 so in dfs you would move from 1 to 2 that is level 0 to le level 1 and then from 2 you would move either towards 3 or towards 4 because these two are nodes which are directly connected to 2 and are not uh, traversed yet or not visited yet so suppose you move towards node 4 so till now it's going good we have traversed all the nodes from level 0 and then level 1 but from sorry <clears throat> but from no, node 4 in bfs what would happen after traversing node 4 you would traverse node 3 because you have to traverse all the node from level 2 but in dfs it would not happen so from node 4 as you can see there are three nodes 2 5 and 6 which are directly connected to node 4 but only 5 and 6 are the nodes which are not traversed yet so it would move towards either 5 or towards 6 so we can see uh, in dfs it doesn't care whether all the nodes from uh, level i are traversed or not it just goes deep and deep that is why it is known as depth first search so what is the technique technique is quite simple you re, uh, you land towards a node and then you mark it as uh, traverse or visited in the visited area this is the visited area zero indicates that uh, node has not been uh, visited yet and one would indicate that node has been visited so as soon as you uh, reach a node you would mark it as visited and then in the adjacency list of it you would uh, start traversing the nodes which are not visited for example if you uh, land on node 2 you would uh, see there are three nodes which are connected to it as its adjacency list tells so you would start from node 1 and see if node 1 has traversed or not if not then we would make a recursive call to dfs1 so uh, this is the visited array this is adjacency list and this is stack a uh, stack is implemented in compilers to carry out the execution of functions so whatever at the top of a stack that function would be executed once the function has completed its execution it would be pop out of 
the stack and the function that is beneath uh, below the function that was below that uh, function previously would now start its execution basically uh, whatever on the top of the stack would be the exec uh, currently executing function and all the rest would be uh, in the pause state so let's start suppose uh, from the main function we made a dfs call to dfs1 so one would indicate function call to node one that is one indicates dfs1 function call so as i have already told you as soon as you reach a node you mark it as visited so that is why node one uh, in the visited array node one is marked as one now in the adjacency list we start looking at the nodes so in the adjacency list of one there is only one node because one is connected to two only that is why uh, in the adjacency list of one there is two so you would make a recursive call to 2 but before that you check whether 2 is visited or not since 2 is not visited you would make a recursive call to dfs2 so in the stack there will be dfs2 on top of dfs1 <coughs> sorry because uh, dfs2 call has made uh, since dfs2 function call has been made so it would be uh, pushed into stack and hence it would be on the top of stack so now as a dfs2 function is on top of stack it would be currently executed function uh, and this would be in the pause state dfs1 would be in pause state it would uh, resume its uh, execution after only uh, dfs2 has completed its uh, execution so now as soon as we reach node 2 we mark it as visited and now in the adjacency list of two we start looking at the nodes which are not visited so uh, we look at node one but node one is all already visited we go to move towards node three node three is not visited so we would make a recursive call to node three so in the stack we pushed dfs3 so dfs3 would be currently executed function now as soon as you reach node 3 you mark it as visited and in the adjacency list you start traversing its nodes which are directly connected to 3 uh, in the adjacency list there is only one node which is connected to 3 but it is already visited so we would not make a recursive call to 2 again and otherwise it would be uh, it would result into infinite uh, recursive call 2 would make a call to 3 3 would make a call to 2 so since 2 is visited uh, there is nothing left in the adjacency list of 3 to explore that is why the execution of 3 completes so we would pop out uh, sorry not we uh, we would track back to node 2 because there is nothing to be executed in, in this function in dfs3 so execution of dfs3 is completed so uh, compiler would uh, compiler would pop out 3 and resume the execution of the function which is below it that is dfs2 would execute uh, would resume its execution so from 3 we would track back to the node uh, from which uh, dfs3 was called and the dfs3 was called from node 2 so we track back to node 2 now uh, dfs2 would resume its execution now uh, dfs2 was before making a uh, a recursive call to node 3 the pointer in the adjacency list was here at node 3 now it's it would resume its uh, execution and now pointer would uh, now point to 4 and since 4 is not visited so we would make a recursive call to node 4 and now dfs4 would be on the top of stack and as soon as we reach node 4 we mark it as visited and now in the adjacency list we start reversing the nodes node 2 already visited node 5 not visited so we would make a dfs call to node 5 and as soon as we reach node 5 we mark it as visited and in the adjacency list of node 5 there is only one node that is node 4 but node 4 is already visited so we cannot make a dfs call to node 4 again since it's already in execution or already visited so uh, execution of dfs5 function has completed so if we would track back to the uh, to the function which has made call to it so it would track back to node 4 that is dfs4 or uh, dfs5 would be 
pop out from stack so dfs4 would resume its execution dfs in dfs4 the pointer was here when when we made a dfs5 call so now pointer would increment and now we would check whether node 6 is sorry here so now we would check whether node 6 is visited or not now since node 6 is not we would visit it so we would make a recursive call to node 6 as soon as we reach node 6 we would mark it as visited and a dfs 6 would be on top of stack and and, and remember this thing is not uh, this is not what you do this is actually uh, what is being implemented in the compiler itself this is nothing to do with you but i am telling you because uh, it would make things clear in your mind that how recursion works whenever you make a function call it gets inside the uh, stack which is there in the compiler and whatever function is on the top of stack that function is the currently ex uh, executing function so node 6 is being executed as soon as you reach node 6 you mark it as visited and in uh, start looking at the nodes in the adjacency list of node 6 in the adjacency list of node 6 there is only one one node that is 4 you would see whether node 4 is visited or not since node 4 is visited so uh, the function of function execution of 6 is completed so it would uh, the it would pop out from stack or it would track back to the function who made a function call to dfs6 so dfs6 was called from dfs4 so dfs4 would start resuming now uh, the pointer before making a, a recursion uh, recursive call to dfs6 was here so now since execution of uh, there's no other node to explore hence execution of node 4 is completed so it would track back to the node which made a, a recursive call to dfs4 and node 2 was the uh, node which made a recursive call to 4 so that is why we would track back to 2 or in other words dfs4 would pop out from stack and now since execution of 2 is also completed since pointer was here pointing to the last element so there is nothing uh, no element ahead to explore hence execution of 2 is also completed so it, it would track back to the fun uh, to the function who made a call to 2 that is it would track back to 1 and now node 1 dfs1 was called from main function so it would track back to main function and a dfs1 would pop out from here <clears throat> so this is how dfs works so if you look at the code it would look something like this uh, dfs is a function with, uh, with return type void because it returns nothing for now uh, it takes a argument that is int v v is the currently current node so as soon as you reach uh, a node v you mark it as visited and you print it uh, printing is to ensure the dfs order you print that node and then in the adjacency list of v you run a loop through 0 to the size of adjacency list of node v and you take out the ith child uh, int child is equals to child uh, is actually the node which is connected to current node so you take out the i child and check whether this is visited or not if it is zero that is it is not visited we make a, a recursive call to that child and after traversing all the nodes since our work is done here we uh, the function execution completes so this is what you do as soon as you reach node v you mark as visited and you can print it to ensure the dfs order to check uh, the output of dfs by yourself and now you traverse all the nodes in the adjacency list of v uh, remember ar is array of vector and then you take out uh, each child one by one and check whether the child is visited or not if the child is not visited you make a dfs call to that child or this code can be shortened like this uh, this is the for each loop if you have worked with c plus, uh, c sharp you know that it, it is for each loop uh, what it does you don't have to write i is equals to zero and so on you can directly you can <coughs> directly take out each element one by one by applying the enhanced for loop or for each loop so you can write it as in child colon the list what it would do it it would take out elements one by one and each time 
child would represent the uh, ith element in this list so it would take out one one by one uh, uh, each element one by one so initially it would be first uh, first node and then second node and third third node and so on so you can directly uh, use this uh, child variable to check whether it is visited and make a recursive call so it it uh, just saves a little bit of code and I like to write it this way so this was all for this uh, lecture thank you guys for watching and yep keep coding and just keep digging into the uh, uh, theory part of DFS and BFS and graph theory because I do not cover the theory part because that you can do by yourself I cover all the things which are uh, which I believe are important for you to understand DFS and since uh, I uh, I emphasize more on implementation part it is not a good idea to leave theory behind so it, it is up to you that you uh, read the theories about DFS and BFS and have a look at the uh, execution order or time limit or the memory limit uh, the time limit of BFS if you are using adjacency list is v, big O of V plus E so thank you for watching and keep coding.